Hello and welcome to my presentation. My name is Victoria Ozanova and I'm a postdoc at Ruhr University Bochum in Germany. Today I want to tell you about one of my favorite projects about infinity two categories or more precisely about a comparison of models of infinity two categories. So the statement or one of the statements I want you uh, to understand at the end is the following one. And it uh, encodes how compositions in infinity two categories work. Before we can go there, let's uh, remind ourselves about uh, uh, categories and infinity categories first. So what is a category? A category is something which consists of some objects and some morphisms, which we think about as a maps between the objects. And these maps should compose. And uh, this composition is unique. Every time you compose them, you get the same result. And you expect this composition to be associative and have some identity, so to be unital. Now, this is very nice and very helpful, but uh, there are many uh, situations where categories are too strict and things which seem to compose into a category actually don't. For example, uh, higher lifts of a fundamental groupoid of a space or higher versions of derived categories in algebra will not form a strict category, but instead something which we call today an infinity or infinity one category. So it still has some objects and it has some morphisms. But now something funny is happening. Uh, instead of uh, the same composition every time, you can compose two morphisms in many different ways, so the result will not be the same, it's not unique. But they are the same up to something, maybe something like homotopy or chain homotopy or something similar. And now that the result is not unique, it does not make sense to talk about associativity or identities, but you want still kind of an associativity and some kind of unitality, which uh, tells you that the composition actually behaves like you used to think it does. This is not a mathematical definition. And one of the problems of infinity one categories or infinity n categories is that um, there are different ways to uh, get uh, a definition for them. We call them models. And these models uh, need to be shown to be equivalent. So let me tell you about one of the uh, most efficient models for infinity one categories. What do you do there? You need uh, to keep track of different compositions. So you want uh, to remember your objects and your morphisms but then uh, also compositions of uh, two consecutive morphisms, three consecutive morphisms, four consecutive morphisms, and so on. And how do you do this? Uh, well, you need to remember the objects and the morphisms, then there's no way to bypass this. But then, then uh, in the next step, you remember all the possible compositions of the two consecutive morphisms. And uh, in the next step, all the possible compositions of um, three consecutive morphisms together with <clears throat> some uh, coherence data remembering the associativity. And uh, what you end up with is a particular uh, simplicial set. And uh, this particular kind of simplicial set uh, are called quasi-categories. And this uh, model is known to be equivalent to all the other models of infinity one categories. Now we want to go one step further. So we know a lot about two categories and we know a lot of two categories um, arising naturally. Um, but some uh, things do not quite fit into the framework of a two category. So you want something which is almost like a two category, but uh, the composition notion should be weakened. So how do we uh, copy this procedure then? Um, well, you start with, uh, the objects and the one morphisms in your two category, and you still want to remember the composition of one morphisms, of uh, two one morphisms, three one morphisms, and so on. But now you have also some two cells, and you want to remember the whiskerings of the two cells, and say the horizontal composition of the two cells. But then you remember that you uh, still have some more compositions. You can compose cells vertically. 
and you want to remember the composition uh, for vertical cells and uh, whiskerings of vertical composition and horizontal compositions of vertical composition and so on and so forth. So that does lead to a notion of an infinity two category and to a model called theta two spaces. Um, but you see that the data of this uh, theta two space quickly get out of hand. So is there something easier? Can we uh, maybe package the data differently? Do we actually need to remember all of these compositions in some weak way? And the answer is uh, there is something easier. And it starts uh, as follows. So you still need to remember your uh, objects and your one morphisms. But now two morphisms, for example, are remembered in this weird way. And then you uh, have tetrahedra of uh, two morphisms and so on and so forth. So this data assembles into a simplicial set. And um, this is almost all you need. Uh, you still need to remember something extra, namely you need to remember which one morphisms and two morphisms actually used to be equivalences. And this leads to a different model for infinity two categories, namely to the model of two completional sets, um, which was recently shown to uh, be equivalent to the other model by a very indirect argument, which in particular does not generalize to dimensions higher than two. So how can you possibly show that uh, these two models are equivalent? One of them is very intuitive, the model of theta two spaces, um, but uh, it, it consumes a lot of data. Um, the uh, co two completional sets are uh, very economic, but uh, far less intuitive. So what you need to do to compare them in particular is uh, to see that the notion of composition, which you have in both of them, coincides. So in particular, uh, if you take the nerve to be um, the embedding of two categories into two completional sets, and this is something you want for sure for any model of infinity two category to be able to uh, think of every two category as an infinity two category. You want to be able to compose uh, in two completional sets, which is far less obvious uh, than in the theta model, for example, uh, two horizontally composable two selves. And the result is the push out on the right. But you want this result to be the same as the composition of the two, two selves in two categories. And this is uh, the nerve on the left hand side. And it's a non trivial thing to say that. Uh, in the model of two completional sets, uh, these two uh, compositions are actually equivalent. And uh, this is an important binding block for a direct comparison between theta two uh, spaces and two completional sets, which is work in progress with uh, Julie Bergner and Martina Rovelli. So um, there's also a direct comparison between these two models. Thank you for your attention.